Hello, welcome to the third session of this expressive drawing course. Today we're going to be looking at using colour and colour associations in expressive work. Um, so here we have a colour wheel, um, just as sort of an introduction. Um, we've got the uh, primary colours, yellow, red and blue, and the colours that are made by mixing the secondary colours. So um, yellow and red make orange, yellow and blue make green, blue and red make purple. And you can decide to just use all the colours that are available to you in a piece of work. And that can be quite exciting and dramatic. Um, this piece, for example, I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see a bit clearer. This drawing um, uses a, a very large range of colours and it uses, you know, almost a rainbow effect to try to get the idea of the shapes within this picture. And here's another one which just uses a colour in a very wild, exuberant um, sort of way. So lots and lots of bright colours. However, it becomes more interesting if you um, work with a more limited range of colours um, because colours have associations and meanings and that's what we're going to look at now. So here's a picture which is uh, mainly blues and it's quite a calm sort of cool effect that you get. On the other hand, here is a picture which is mainly sort of browns and you get a much more earthy natural sort of feel to the picture let's say um you have associations with um colors i'm going to look at a little chart um, now which shows you those associations so red is associated with uh, passion love but also uh, in an odd way um with anger which is almost the opposite emotion um Purple is often associated with sophistication, richness, and so on. Yellow is associated with warmth, but also cowardliness. Um, blue, calm and comfort, but also coldness. Um, greens can be very fresh and, and soothing, but certain greens can be a little bit icky as well. Um, and what's interesting about when you take a colour in isolation is that... Um, it can have more than one meaning. Sometimes they're contradictory. Um, so what matters is, first of all, subject matter that you're using, but also perhaps the other colours that you use alongside that main colour. These two uh, examples, I hope, illustrate this. On the left-hand side, we've got um, a picture by Pablo Picasso from his blue period. Um, blues and... Uh, sort of greens, and it has a very melancholy sort of feel to it. On the other hand, we have George O'Keefe with um, a range of colours from uh, dominated reds and oranges, maybe a little bit of yellow. There's a bit of contrast to purple, in, but the main colours are, are red, orange and yellow, and you have a real sort of warmth. Um, and what we're using here is what's called a limited palette of colours. A limited palette of colours, like in the examples I just showed you, where the colours are quite close to each other, um, for example, in the blues and greens or the reds and, and yellows and oranges, what we tend to get is something which is quite harmonious, quite a balanced sort of feel to the picture. Here we have another picture by George O'Keefe, but this time we have a much stronger contrast uh, between the red and the green and what is being used here is opposite colors or what's called the complementary contrast which i'll show you on the color wheel so if we take colors which are opposite to each other on the color wheel they're the ones that are as different to each other as possible so for example blue and orange so that's blue and the colors made from the other two primaries yellow and red orange that strong contrast creates a bold statement or you can go um, yellow and purple, or you could go greeny yellow and reddy violet. Um, any, any combination which uses opposite creates a bold statement in your work. The next examples use a wider range 
um, of equally spaced colours. So in this case, um, yellows, reds and blues um, to create um, what is an exciting colour scheme. So you can see how this has been used to try and create the form of this picture. Here's another lovely one um, where it's more sort of uh, pinks, oranges and, and yellowy green. So slight shift around that wheel. And if I show you that now on the colour wheel, hopefully you'll see what I mean. So when we look on the, the colour wheel, images where the colours are spaced out quite evenly, create an exciting sort of scheme. So we've got yellow, red and blue here. We could have um, green, orange and purple, for example. Those will create exciting schemes of colour. Finally, we have colours which have been put together, which are um, a little bit clashing. So this orange, purple and green together, those sort of you know, very strong combinations of, of, of different colours. It's what we call colour discord. So discord is putting colours together which kind of don't really work together. Clash, so you get something which can be perhaps a little bit icky or seem a little bit strange and weird, which can be really useful in, uh, in some pictures. So now I've talked a little bit about, um, about colour and its associations and properties. Um, let's start putting that into practice. So I'm going to be drawing um, from this. Uh, unusual sort of old I think railway lamp um, and what I want to do is to try and explore it uh, and develop some sort of character because I think it's got loads of character it's a very interesting sort of thing let's see how I can imaginatively um, develop a drawing from this so the first thing I'm going to start working with is continuous line drawing I used continuous line drawing in the first session um, just with a black pen, um, but this time I'm going to be working with three coloured pens. Um, you can see it most clearly on this example here. Uh, so using three pens at once um, to draw. Um, and these are these are, can be really interesting um, experiments um, to stimulate your imagination, particularly if you then, uh, if you work with water soluble pens, uh, so the cheapest ones, um, and then add some water and maybe dry it and draw back into it, which is what has been done on these. And I think this one in particular, really interesting, successful drawing um, where the drawing has evolved its own sort of expressive quality um, through this technique. So put those away. I've got three pens here. Um, I'm sticking with um, colours which I could see on the object. So. I could see red, I could see sort of oranges and browns, and I could see in the sort of metallic bits um, and the glass, a sort of tint, hints of blue. So I'm taking all those three colours together, and here goes. Ah, so there's my initial drawing. It might look a little bit um, fuzzy to you because of those multiple lines together. Uh, and what I'm going to do now, I think, is wet it a little bit, dry it, and then start drawing back into it.
Hopefully you can see that um, I didn't just put water everywhere. I tried to apply it where the dark areas were uh, on my object. Um, and in order to sort of bring out a little bit more of the form again, um, I'm going to just bring in a picture so you can sort of see that. So hopefully you can see the where I've tried to emphasize those sort of darker areas. Um, and now I'm going to carry on working into it. I'm going to introduce um, one of the color curves. It's perhaps a bit too uh, orange. Uh, I really would be better off with the yellow. And also what that will allow me to do is move to a bold combination, which is evenly spaced out color. So I'm going to work back into this a little bit now. Um, with the colors first of all on their own and then I might introduce a little bit of black and we'll see how that all develops. So I'm referring back to the object, looking at it, looking where the shadows are and starting to develop. I'll try to keep it loose with that sort of feel that I've already got. Scribby. Okay, I think that's enough working into that first drawing for now um, because this is really just to start to get me warmed up and now I want to look at what the qualities are that I find interesting and then try to develop that through a series of, of quicker studies. So I'm going to refer to the sheet we had in the first session, these uh, descriptive words and try and identify which ones seem to fit best with the uh, with the sort of things I like in the piece of work. So I quite like these sort of flowing lines, flowing curving. I could try and emphasize those. Um, but I also like the sort of uh, the, the lengthened scribbles. and these sort of bold sort of um, dashed lines. So quite angular dashed lines. The color is something that um, I'm gonna do a few experiments with because this one was trying to be mm, fairly you know, naturalistic. In other words, getting colors um, directly from the, the piece work. And I introduced um, a little extra color to make it bold, but I'm going to try out different combinations of colors in a series of studies um, and produce a study sheet. I'm going to just show you a couple of examples of study sheets, though, just to get the idea about what a study sheet is. Here we have a study sheet from a rusty piece of cog, and you can see uh, trying it out in different media, uh, drawing it in slightly different ways. Uh, trying to find a way to uh, to draw it most effectively um, or most interestingly. Two more study sheets. This is a piece of rope, um, trying out different colour combinations and, uh, and different uh, techniques for drawing it, um, some scruffier than others. And here, three very careful drawings of eyes, but trying out, or four actually, trying out um, different color combinations, quite naturalistic, exaggerated colors, more artificial colors. In my first study, I want to try and bring out the, um, the sort of the flowing curving sort of qualities uh, in the handle and in these sort of parts. Um, so exaggerating them, it will distort them a little bit. Uh, and just to remind you that that actually moves up and down. That's something I want to kind of think about and explore. Um, 
in the drawing and uh, I'm going to stick with quite a harmonious range of colors so keeping it quite limited red orange yellow all close together a little bit of brown just for darkening off um, so here goes with my first study I start by sketching out with um, I wouldn't usually start with yellow but you'd struggle to see that so I'll start with the orange do sort of, sort of kind of sketch out the, the sort of idea this wonderful sort of curvy quality to this flowing this handle So that's my first sort of um, exploration. Notice it still looks very, very much like the lamp, and but these sort of curves exaggerated a lot. Um, I think I lost um, those sort of interesting sort of lines that, that were on, on here, the, the dash of the, the hinge and so on, and those are things I want to bring back out. Um, quite a jolly sort of look to it, but um, I want to try and develop that, uh, that further. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, couldn't I make these shapes a little bit more uh, sinuous? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, some smaller thumbnail sketches just around here, exploring, maybe making these a little bit more sinuous now.
So as you can see with these studies, um, there's been a certain amount of evolution trying to emphasize uh, through the drawings that um, undulating shape and it's becoming almost sort of bone like um, in terms of the handle and um, these are always becoming like like some kind of mushrooms or something growing from the top um, which is weird because I really hate funguses and so on um, but the base has become very unimportant to me it's almost doesn't seem you know it's an afterthought so I, I've actually in this one left them out notice I've also been trying different color combinations here trying um, discordant or clashing colors here trying um, uh, complementary contrast so opposite colors uh, to create a, a, you know really sort of bold design and I think I'm going to go with something perhaps along this sort of lines um, the reds and greens but I might throw in one or two other colors just to bit make it a little bit more discordant I think um, but now now I sort of start to get some ideas about much more kind of bony shapes um, what I want to do is just have a little bit of a think about what might be the mater best materials because I've been working with um, watercolor pencils um, so far but I wonder first of all whether they would work look better if I put a wash on first or secondly whether to use um, pastels or maybe even a combination of all those things so uh, on my next sheet I'm going to be doing some closer studies just exploring um, those media and I will just point out at this point that even though these are developing slightly more abstractly if you like I constantly looking back at the object to see where light and shadow is and for inspiration for shapes. So I've, I've loosely sketched out three sort of sections which I'm going to put washes into and then try different material over the top. could do more studies but just looking at these ones what's clear I think is that first of all the wash really helps um, and the pencil is quite nice on the wash um, the pen although I really like the pen um, it, it doesn't um, add enough um, sort of strength to it but the combination of both pastels and pencil here over the wash I think is the strongest combination so that's what I'm going to go with for my fun. 
I sketched out my sort of final design. Um, you should be able to just about see where I, I rubbed things out and changed it and tried to um, continue to exaggerate and develop this form um, as I was going along. And now I'm going to uh, apply a wash and get it dry before I, I carry on with the pastels and then the pencils. There's my initial wash. I'm now going to um, start to work my first layer of pastels on the top using chalk pastels. Uh, I'm going to fix it, put another layer of pastels on for greater detail and depth, and then work pencils into it. If you are, if you want to use pastels and you've never used them before, um, check out one of our earlier videos, um, Drawing Course 2, Session 3, which goes to use them pastels. first layer of pastel has been fixed and now I'm putting on a second layer to build it up and make it more solid. Now I've fixed that for a second time, I'm going to start to sharpen up and add detail. Um, first thing I'm going to do is cut in around the outside with white, just re-emphasize the shapes and get rid of the smudginess. And then I'm going to work with um, pencils back on the top.
So this drawing has had um, many twists and turns, if you'll pardon the pun. It's uh, sort of evolved uh, as it, it's come along. And I've maintained that very bold contrast between the, the red and the green, but introduced in a few other colours. It hasn't made it quite as clashy as I thought it perhaps would. Um, but even so, uh, I think adding the, the layers of marks with the pencils, it's just sort of finished uh, and sharpened that all up. Um, quite a fun, silly drawing, really, but I enjoyed it. Um, I'm now going to show you some examples from past students. <laughs> 